With a wild center, this is Lunchtime Live. We're talking about nature and exciting wildlife. Encounters with otters and owls too. From Tupper Lake right to you. Learn about the plants and trees. There's so much to explore and see. Lunchtime Live, it's time to start the show. From the wild center, here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Michael here with another edition of Lunchtime Live presents Nature Lab. This week, I'll send you over to Corey and Morgan who will be exploring Adirondack waterfowl. So I hope you have fun and I'll see you back here soon. Happy exploring, everybody. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Nature Lab. I'm Corey, a museum fellow here at the Wild Center. This month, we've been talking all about birds, and in this video, we're gonna zoom in on a few specific birds found in some very important aquatic ecosystems across the Adirondacks. Waterfowl. Because the Adirondacks has thousands of lakes, rivers, and ponds, we have a very diverse group of waterfowl that take advantage of this kind of habitat throughout the park. Waterfowl is more of just a blanket term for birds that primarily reside in aquatic environments, including all kinds of ducks, geese, and loons. Out of all the waterfowl that make their summer home in the Adirondacks, the group that is the most recognizable are the ducks. A diverse assortment of duck species can be found in the Adirondacks over the course of the year. Some species stay throughout the summer to mate and raise their young, while others stop by briefly in the fall on their way through their fall migration. Common species that reside here through the summer are the American black duck, common merganser, mallard, ring-necked duck, hooded merganser, and the wood duck. The abundance of isolated lakes and ponds throughout the park provides safe environments for the ducks to live and have ducklings. These birds use the richness of the Adirondack aquatic ecosystems to rear their young, teaching them how to forage, fly, and find shelter. Ducks are well suited for their lifestyle as semi-aquatic birds. They have many different adaptations that separates them from the songbirds we see in our bird feeders or the birds of prey that hunt in the forest. We can observe all of these interesting features here on site in our Marsh Oxbow exhibit with the help of our resident wood ducks. A little introduction to these birds. We have a male and female pair here. And because this species is sexually dimorphic, they look a bit different from each other. Both of these ducks have the hooded feathers on their head, but you'll notice that the male is much more colorful than the female. The male also has a bright orange bill, where the female's bill is in more of a gray color. As they swim around the exhibit, we can get a first-hand look at ducks' unique adaptations to their environment. There are a lot of benefits that come with living in and around water bodies. There's plenty of food available like aquatic plants, insects and invertebrates, fish, as well as amphibians and reptiles like frogs and snakes. But in order to take advantage of the plethora of food in the water, ducks have to be pretty good swimmers. They have several distinct adaptations that help them get around in the water. One of the most notable adaptations is found on their feet. By having broad webbed feet, they are able to swim a lot better in aquatic environments, just like when we wear flippers to go scuba diving. Here, we can see how the ducks use their feet to quickly move through the water. Wood ducks' feet are a little bit different than other species. They're one of the only kinds of ducks that have feet strong enough to grip onto bark and perch on branches. Which means in addition to seeing these guys in the water, you may even see them up in trees. Another distinctive feature is found within their bills. Because ducks are in the water the majority of the time, they've evolved small bristles inside their bills that serve to filter out food from the water, so they're not constantly taking in mouthfuls of water. Here we can get a little glimpse of our wood ducks filter feeding by dipping their beak in the water to get a drink. A third notable water adaptation is their waterproof feathers. Ducks have an oily coating on their top feathers that makes them waterproof so that their feathers underneath stay dry. This is going to help the ducks stay warm and also decrease their body weight, improving their movement through the water and the air. Now over to Morgan to continue our exploration of Adirondack waterfowl. Different waterfowl species often share the same habitat in the Adirondacks, but have adapted differently to their environments. A great example of this is found in a species very well known in the Adirondacks, the common loon. Now the common loon is one of five species of loon in the world, and it's not only the largest, but also the only species of loon here in the Adirondacks. Common loons are very well known for their summer plumage, as you see exhibited in this taxidermy, where they sport a black and white checkered back, a striped neck, and bright red eyes. 
It's been theorized that their eyes actually evolved to help them to see better underwater by filtering out green and blue light. Now during this time of year, being spring and summer, loons tend to be found on lakes and large ponds nesting. In the winter, loons trade in these bold feathers and eyes for a more subdued gray coloration. But due to the frozen water in winter, loons are going to tend to migrate to shallow coastal marine habitats to find more readily available food sources. Common loons have many adaptations that allow them to thrive in various water bodies across the Adirondacks. And one of those adaptations is in how they feed in the water. Loons are known as a diving bird, which is different from the wood ducks we just talked about, which are known as dabbling birds. This is a very common classification that you're going to find in waterfowl, and it describes how the bird feeds in its aquatic environment. Dabbling birds sit high on the water and tilt themselves over to feed rather than diving really deep. Due to this, they're going to feed on aquatic vegetation, seeds, and invertebrates like insects on or near the surface of that water. In contrast to this, the loon is a diving bird, so it's going to sit low in the water and dive deep up to 200 feet to hunt fish and large crustaceans. To sit lower in the water, diving ducks have evolved to have legs that are placed towards the back of their body, rather than the middle like the dabbling duck. Due to the fact that common loon is constantly diving through the water, uh, the water column, they have also evolved to have bones that are mostly solid, and that's gonna make them less buoyant in the water and better divers. In contrast, most bird species have hollow bones, and that's going to help them to fly better. To allow the loon to shift between diving and floating, they also have evolved air sacs within their body. If the loon needs to float on the water surface, they'll inhale air, and if they need to dive or even sink low in the water so that they can't be seen, they'll exhale air. Adirondack waterfowl have developed many different adaptations that allow them to thrive in this environment. I hope you all enjoyed learning a little bit more about the many waterfowl that call the Adirondacks home. Have a great day, everyone. Back to you, Michael. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had fun exploring with Corey and Morgan, learning all about the waterfowl that live right here in the Adirondacks. Your challenge today can be found at wildcenter.org slash nature lab and can be supported with our handy data sheet here. But the general idea of your activity, or your challenge, is to get creative. So we're gonna take everything that we just learned about different species of ducks and loons that live here in the Adirondacks and use that as inspiration to create your very own species of waterfowl. As you do this, it's always fun to create a great species name uh, and, the, and many of the characteristics of that bird. But we want you to keep in mind three different factors, three different adaptations, if you will. So one, how is your waterfowl going to get around? Two, how is it going to stay dry, spending all that time in the water? And three, how is it going to find its food? Once you think about all those, you can draw up a diagram, write a little description. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all come up with, because I know you can be super creative. I hope you all have fun, and we'll see you next week.